G'day there guys, makes way more excuses than money here. Back at it again with another episode of r slash am I the a-hole. Now if you love today's video, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and enjoy this bloody good content. Posted by user Eternal Flower Girl. Titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my friend she can't be a virgin? I'm unsure if this is rude and or ridiculous, so Reddit can be the judge. My friend Elle is very adamant about saving herself until marriage. We are both 21 female. It wasn't even just for her. She would shame and side-eye people who weren't married and sleeping together, even one of our mutual friends. She wholeheartedly believed that was a sin, as she was very religious. However, she got a boyfriend, and they ended up sleeping together, and she told me that herself. Edit, she told me he took her virginity. One thing led to another, and they broke up amicably. After that, we were hanging out, and she went off on a tangent saying, girls need to respect themselves and not sleep around. That's what husbands are for. And I say, does that make you one of those girls? What are you talking about? I mean, you had sex. I explain that it doesn't have to be shameful, and she can just not do it again until she's married if she pleases. She seemed to be in disbelief that she's not a virgin anymore. She also seemed upset that I mentioned that to her. I mean, we're 21. I hope she knows what sex is. Am I the a-hole for pointing this out? Edit, oh wow, I didn't expect this to blow up. <laughs> I do have one thing to say. When my friend says sleeps around, she also believes that any girl in a relationship is sleeping around because she is also being unfaithful to her future husband. That was poor wording on my part. I was reusing her words though. I think your friend is just uh, a bit of an oddball there. I don't think she's coming to grips with what sex is. I think she's been very sheltered. I get that's just my interpretation of the situation. And I don't know if it makes you an a-hole for pointing that out. Maybe in her perception, you're being an a-hole by not agreeing with her views. But I don't think anyone else would agree with that. And I think everyone would agree that you're not the a-hole here. At least I would. Not the a-hole, and she's a hypocrite. How does she think she can have sex and still be a virgin? She either doesn't know the definition of sex or virgin. This is one of those posts that makes me sigh and make disappointed comments about the state of sex ed in this country, assuming USA. I can only hope that she's not banking on the poop hole loophole or any other loophole. Edit. I want to point out that this chick probably felt a virgin was a big part of her identity. Now that's gone, and she doesn't know how to navigate that, which is hard. Doesn't make it okay for her to be judgy about people's premarital shenanigans, but having your identity up and change on you is tough. Here's hoping she figures it out and gets nicer. Yeah, it's in the US. We actually had very inclusive sex ed. She learned all the details from it, and then decided to be self-righteous about saving herself after that. Well, that's unfortunate in a different way then. It sounds like saving myself for the man I will marry is a part of her identity. She's probably having a lot of trouble reconciling that with the reality of, you know, reality. Having your identity change on you can be hard as hell. I'm trying to stop myself from saying something snarky, so instead, I'll just hope that this experience teaches her to be less judgmental of others, though there's a chance it'll go the other way. People have sex because sex is fun. That's all there needs to be. That's what I thought. I've seen several interviews of girls that saved themselves for marriage, and how their families and churches would put them on a pedestal for staying a virgin. Then when they got married and lost their virginity, they felt like they lost their identity and what made them worthy as a person. Many say it was hard to reconcile with, and how they felt they no longer had a place or worth. Some even said that it really messed up their marriage because of how they felt afterwards. Placing such an emphasis on virginity is really bad for mental health and self-worth. Not the a-hole. She is the a-hole for shaming people who aren't virgins, she is also stupid, especially for doing it herself. There's just something that really bothers me about tramp shaming while doing it themselves. Like, I knew a gay man bragged to me about sleeping with two different dudes within an hour of each other, then go on Facebook to shame some guy for having multiple partners over the prior three years. I've also had guys freak out at me because I've slept with other people before I met them, despite being sexually active as well. 
not the a-hole, and calling out a shamer is acceptable if that person is being an abusive jerk, in my opinion. I've never encountered it before. Why do people care if you've had sex with someone before being in a relationship with them? I mean, if they knew you were sexually active, what? why are they mad? It doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> so many mental gymnastics going into their reasoning there. Posted by user, am I the a-hole win period. Titled, am I the a-hole for defending my sister's period against my stepmom, even though I don't have a period. I, 16 male, have a twin sister, 16 female. We live with our dad and stepmom. Our dad is an essential worker, so he's out working most days, leaving our stepmom. My sister's periods are bad. She's on medication to help with the flow of blood, but she doesn't have any prescribed painkillers. And her cramps are bad. She can barely move, and sometimes she throws up. We have some off-the-counter painkillers that my dad got for her, which helps her a little. When my sister has her period and cramps, she usually doesn't leave her room. I'm normally the one she will let into the room since we were very close, so my stepmom doesn't fully understand how bad her cramps get, but I see them firsthand. Only my dad and stepmom know where her painkillers are, as she's too unorganized and would probably lose them. Every time she has a cramp, she tells me and I go ask my dad. My dad was at work this time, so I asked my stepmom where the pills were, and she started saying how my sister was such a drama queen. I didn't really have time to argue with her since my sister was in her room in pain, so I ignored it and just kept asking, but she wouldn't tell me. At this point, I just called my dad and he told me where they were and I got them for my sister. I could have just left it there, but my stepmom's comments really annoyed me. I went back downstairs and called her a fudging dick because she didn't just show me where the pills were. I told her she was out of place to deny my sister her pills and have to make me call my dad when he was at work, and that she should have just shut her entitled mouth up and told me. Not word for word, you know, I curse a lot. She told me that a girl her age is just being dramatic and everyone has cramps, so she didn't need to have the painkillers in case she became dependent. She told me she had cramps too, and they went away by the time she hit 25, and she didn't use any painkillers for them. I told her she had no idea what she's talking about, because she's never actually seen the pain my sister goes through, because she never bothers to check in on her. She told me to shut my mouth because she had more of an idea about what a period was like than I did, because I'm just a boy. She told me if her period was really that painful, she would have come downstairs and asked for the pills herself. I told her she could barely move from the pain, so of course I'm the one who has to get them. At this point, I was getting really mad, and I didn't want our neighbors to hear my yelling, so I just went upstairs. I told my sister about the fight, but she really didn't give me an opinion on the fight since she was half asleep. I've been thinking a lot about it, and I'm very sure I'm in the right, but I don't want to act like I know everything about periods, since I've never had one and she's had many. Am I the a-hole for arguing with my stepmom about periods? I don't think you're the a-hole for arguing with her about it personally. You're young, and you haven't got much experience with it, and obviously, you've not gone through it yourself. But you'd think throughout the stepmom's lifetime, she would have had friends that had some sort of period pains that were that bad. Or maybe she just has empathy for her younger kids. I know it does suck when people fake pain and are drama queens, but to have it on such a regular basis, and continually being that bad? Come on, I feel like you really need to have some empathy in that situation. A lot of people have period pains that bad, the stepmom's just being a complete asshole. And I think OP is great for educating himself and standing up for his twin sister. It's really nice to see, and I think he's not the a-hole as a result of that. As a woman who had her pain denied by a step-parent for many, many years, you were in the right. ETA, OP, your sister should definitely see a doctor about her period. Her periods should not be this traumatic. The problem, I think, is that some women like me have almost no physical symptoms when on the rag. I barely have cramps, and other than that, I'm fine, besides being extra emotional right before. My sister and other women have horrible cramps, and women like me think they're faking. 
eventually had a rough one and started to understand, and then just got older and realized I'm in the minority when it comes to menstrual pain. OP's sister may have PCOS if they're this bad though, and probably should see a doctor. Endometriosis here. I was told for 20 years that I was being overly dramatic and it can't be that bad. Finally found a doctor, after struggling to get pregnant, who did an HSG exam and found massive problems with one of my fallopian tubes. Exploratory surgery discovered endometriosis and all my organs on one side were fused together from it. The more you know. Periods should not be extremely painful. I would definitely suggest she sees a doctor about it. Multiple, if no one takes her pain seriously. Had my pain not been brushed away for 20, I wouldn't be three surgeries in to fix the damage for it, nor be struggling with infertility, as there is medication that can help endometriosis to help prevent fertility issues. Posted by user Yaki Jackie, titled, Am I the a-hole for splitting off my knitting club and joining a second one to escape mommy talk? About two years ago, I, 36 female, started a club through a meetup site. It was for women to get together and do stuff like knit, crochet, sew, embroider, and bead. It started slow, but ramped up, and became a bi-weekly thing. I became fairly close with a number of people, and considered them friends. As time went on, and new people joined, others moved away, things shifted in the club. A lot of new or expecting mothers joined the group. Conversations in the meetups would eventually turn back to being about kids, no matter what other conversations were going on. Someone would be talking about their job, and one of the mums would find a way to steer the conversation to her daughter's grades. Me and a few others would try to redirect conversation, encourage quiet folks to speak up, etc. At one point, a very cool new person joined, Amy, and during the last two-thirds of the meetup, she said something like, I didn't realise this was a mum group. They all laughed about it, but Amy didn't come back. I sent her a message through the meetup app and asked her about it because I thought she was a great addition, and she said she just wasn't into mummy group stuff. Explaining the whole story to her, she offered me a solution. Just let them have their mummy group and split off and make a new one. I felt bad because some of these women were really nice, but just, I don't care that much about your kids. I'm sorry. A light-hearted anecdote here or there, sure, but I started to dread going to the meetups because it would always, always end up about their kids. So, Amy started a new club and advertised it, and I told a few of the other members of my group that I knew they were tired of being bulldozed. We scheduled it differently, and I continued to attend my old group a few more times until I said I was handing it off to another woman and stepping away. I didn't give any reason, didn't lie, etc. Well, about three months later, they found out. Probably saw it on the meetup app. Boy, it didn't go over well. I got confronted by one of the mums and was told that I was an unfeminist and not family friendly and judgmental and a kid hater. I ended up saying, look, I get that this hurts your feelings and I'm sorry, but the old group just became something different than I intended, and despite trying to shift it, I felt like splitting off and forging a new group was the best choice for everyone. Now you guys can talk about your kids, and we can talk about other things. She ended up slamming me on Instagram and Facebook, trying to make it into a big crusade, but it kind of flopped. I still grapple with feeling bad about it, I think I was right, and I tried to be polite about it, but it obviously hurt someone's feelings badly enough to be this angry at me for this long. Am I the a-hole? No, I don't think I can really fault you for it. You know, it kind of sucks that you did have to leave and not be a part of their chitter-chatter, but that's just life. People move groups, people move location, they lose interest in things, they don't want to talk about kids all the time. Everyone can choose where they want to socialize and do their knitting. Whatever floats their boat holding a goat, that's all fine with me. She's the a-hole for slamming you on Instagram and Facebook trying to defame you like that. You're not the a-hole by going somewhere you feel more welcome. Not the a-hole. People can always find ways to be offended and ticked off. You didn't do anything wrong, and I do think the way you did it was just fine. 
It's not like you prevented them from having their mummy knitting club, and I'm guessing you weren't contributing much to their kids talk anyway, so I don't see why she cares that much that you're gone. People love to make drama, and I'll never know why. They probably need that kind of drama because that's the only thing they have to talk about apart from their kids. I have kids. I participate in mum groups. I agree with this. Some people are just hungry for gossip and drama. I'm a mum and used to participate in mum groups too. I quickly learned that some of these women have nothing else to talk about outside of their kids. I like my own kids usually. I don't give a crap about anyone else's. And that whole bragging about achievements thing bugs the freak out of me. One time, after a round of, oh my god, Carter just got his third stripe on his camo belt at Taekwondo, and <gasps> Addison just shaved three seconds off her 200 meter freestyle, I was asked what my youngest was up to. I said he recorded one brother farting with his bare ass hovering over the other brother's face while sleeping. I have three boys, god help me. And after 10 hours on YouTube, it got 23,000 views. So I and my degenerate male spawn are no longer welcome. Lol. <laughs> it's, so, it's so good. See, why are they looking for drama? That's the quality content I'd be looking for if I was in these mom groups. Posted by user, I don't know, because they deleted their account, lol. Am I the a-hole for logging into my sister-in-law's accounts and taking a post about me and my daughter down? I am a mother to a seven-year-old girl. For various reasons, there are several people who I do not want having any form of access to her, and that includes photos and social media. I don't post about having a daughter, keep my profiles professional, and don't post photos with her in them. I'm not an idiot. I know once my daughter is old enough for social media, she will put pictures of herself online. But by then, we will have had a serious talk about internet safety, the kind of talk I can't have with a seven-year-old. I've been with my fiancé for three years now, and a few weeks ago he proposed. We told his sister yesterday over a video call. My daughter was with us on the call. My sister-in-law has known my daughter since she was four, she's really good with her, and she knows the rules about social media. I've had to remind her of these rules more than once because sister-in-law runs a mummy blog and her daughter is only a couple of months older than mine and the two are good friends. So if she takes photos of her kid and mine is in the photos, I ask her to crop my kid out. She has thousands of followers on her blog and social media and is popular enough to have been sponsored a few times, but she's not anywhere near living off of it and she has a 9 to 5 job. A few hours after the video chat was over, I got a notification for Sister-in-Law's blog. Sister-in-Law has posted about our engagement, and alongside it, she put a screenshot of us mid-call with my daughter showing off the ring, and cross-posted it to all her social media, where she's tagged us in it, and the post is a long piece that makes clear that my daughter isn't my fiancé's child. This is the exact thing I don't want on the internet. Proof that I have a daughter, alongside my name, picture, posted by someone in my fiancé's family with a massive following on five different websites. I untagged myself from what I could, but my full name, first, middle, and last name, was on the post and still searchable. We called sister-in-law and asked her nicely to take the post down. She refused. My fiancé then asked her not so nicely, and she refused again and hung up on us. I had a minor freakout, and my fiancé said that his sister had the same password for everything when they were kids, so if I wanted, he could try and get in and take the posts down himself. I said yes. The password was the same, so he logged in and took it all down, then texted sister-in-law saying what we'd done, and that he'd hoped it wouldn't come to this. She is furious with us, and made a whole new post about how we hacked her account, and since then it's been non-stop messages from her, as well as my fiancé's immediate family, saying we overreacted, invaded her privacy, and that we should have just asked her again to take it down before going nuclear. Are we the a-hole? Update, spoken to a lawyer who has a cease and desist ready to go when and if we need it, and said that if sister-in-law did pursue legal action, she'd come off way worse than us, and we'd get off close to scot-free by comparison. 
I can see why some people would think that just going into the account like that is a dick move and you know, it's uncalled for. But if it was me in the same situation, I'd probably do it, not gonna lie. I feel like that action is warranted when you've asked multiple times, hey, I don't like this. You know I don't like this. Take it down. Please take it down. And then you put a gun to them and you say, put it down now and they hang up on you. And you're like, why? Why would you hang the phone up while I have a gun at you? Anyway, the point I'm trying to make here is that I don't think OP is the a-hole. I think that the sister-in-law wasn't respecting their privacy and continued not to respect their privacy and is like, what? You have the power to take it down? Now I'm just gonna slander you and drag you online because that's the cool thing to do. I'm glad they have a lawyer ready to go and, you know, they're gonna take down sister-in-law if she tries it again. OP, not the a-hole. You were forced to do this to protect your child. Her blog and popularity are certainly not as important as your kid. The internet is forever, and honestly, I'd be furious at this. She is incredibly selfish. What reason did she give for refusing to take it down or stop posting about you? That I need to loosen the rules on social media and be aware that she's going to end up on social media eventually. Plus that you never let me post about her and that an engagement is a special occasion that she should be able to share with her followers, especially as her whole thing is family, and me and my daughter will be two new additions to the family, and the people I'm worried about seeing her probably won't see it anyway. You mean her content pool is growing, and how dare you cut her from using your daughter as a financial opportunity? Ah, oh, the nerve of you! I mean, the true nuclear option would be to ask her and everyone else who reblogged it to take it down for the safety of the child. Let them know you asked her not to and add that she didn't care that a post right now could put your child at risk. I'm assuming if you're trying to keep stuff on the down low that there are people who would absolutely make this a problem for you. That kind of stuff ruins influences. No. True Nuclear would have been changing her email address and passwords on those accounts and deleting all her posts, then deleting the accounts. Ooh, that would have got you in legal trouble, I'm pretty sure. I, th I feel like that's over the line. And how funny is it that they're trying to lecture them on internet safety and yet they use the same password their entire life? Come on, sis. Posted by user, Apartment Trouble. Titled, Am I the a-hole for not giving a couple who's going camping with me a tent for two? And asking them to sleep in the girls' tent and boys' tent? I was organizing a camping trip, invited a lot of friends, and I had a couple's tent to lend out. I treated spots in the tent as first come, first serve. As of this weekend, the tents were planned out like this. My big dome tent is the guys' tent. Two guys were sleeping in there, and there was room for one more. My other big dome tent is the girls' tent. Two girls were sleeping in there, and there was room for one more. Julie's little tent. My friend Julie's tent, she would be sleeping in it alone. It could fit too snugly, but she wanted to sleep alone. And my little tent. My own tent, I'd be sleeping in it alone. It could also fit too, but very tightly. So when my friend Jess wanted to come and bring her boyfriend, I said that there was room in the tents for them, she could sleep with the girls and him with the guys. She said that they should get a tent to themselves because they're a couple, and it would be weird for a boyfriend to sleep with two guys he's never met. I said that I'd been treating tent spots as first come first serve, and everyone has already picked their spots. She was like, why do you and Julie get two person tents to yourselves? And I said that Julie bought her own tent, and that since I was organizing the trip and supplying almost everything, I took first dibs and picked my favorite tiny tent. She wanted me and Julie to share and give one of the tents of ours for her and her boyfriend, or for one of us to join the big girl's tent and give them our tent. I said that if they wanted a tent for two that much, they could just get a cheap one at Walmart for the weekend but I didn't want to change tent arrangements when I told everyone for weeks that tent arrangements are first come, first serve. Jess told me it was really inconsiderate of me that I'm acting like a kid having boys and girls tents, and that grown-ups will let couples sleep together. I said it's not about letting them sleep together, it's just that the only spots are in the girls' tent and boys' tent. Am I the a-hole for not just switching spots? Why is this such an issue with them? Jesus Christ, just get your own tent if you're not happy with it. 
You're already getting like everything provided for you. Why do you care if you can't sleep together? Just Jesus, it's a camping trip with friends. You're not going to be boning in the forest around your friends. Come on. OP, you're not the a-hole in this situation, and I wouldn't give up my spot for them. They're being choosing beggars in this situation, and they can just not come if they don't want to. That's fine too. Not the a-hole. If she wants to sleep with her boyfriend so badly, she can go out and get her own tent. She's lucky you're even nice enough to offer your other tent as it is. Exactly this. Beggars can't be choosers and all that. The issue is the demand made to the organizer. What she should have done is ask the other people and taken the no. I don't know. Sounds like a-hole behavior then too. Either you're asking the two men or two women to bunk as four pee of mixed gender in a big tent so you can have the other big tent, or you're saying, hey, you guys that own your own tents, one of you should give that up to us and go sleep in the other tents. I think asking and then accepting a no would be a no a-holes here type of situation. Jess isn't entitled to anything, but asking for a favor from the other campers wouldn't be wrong. She goes into a-hole territory by basically making demands and refusing to take no for an answer. Not the a-hole. Every time she brings it up, send her a link to another cheap tent. I suggest sending her increasingly expensive tent links. I would suggest increasingly cheaper tents, up to and including a cardboard box. Despite the seeming contradiction, these are both the best course of action. Not the a-hole. You have clearly said that it's first come, first served, and offered them a tent to stay in for free. She is not an a-hole for asking you to swap, but is an a-hole to keep pushing it, and for saying that they should get to share a tent for free because they are adults. Alright, and I think that's where we're going to leave today's episode, guys. I really do hope you enjoyed the content today. If you guys loved watching it as much as I loved making it, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel already if you haven't. Tell me what you thought of it down in the comments below. Maybe like the video, who knows? I'd also like to take this time to thank my awesome Patreon and channel members. Without you guys, you know, I don't know what I'd do. I'd probably be homeless on the streets of Ireland, crying Irish dancing all over town. It would just be a mess. <laughs> But no, for real, you guys are up on the screen now. Thank each and every one of you guys. And if you personally want to join the club yourself, there are links down in the description below. There's also the join button next to the subscribe button. Small monthly fee, but hey, it goes a long way to help me create more awesome content. Well, with that said, guys, I hope you do have a lovely day, night, sleep, evening, day at work, day at school, whatever you're up to. I hope you keep awesome today. You're looking amazing. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.